Um, so yeah, this is a kind of exciting uh, thing to present about. This is a, a new one for us at Temporal. Uh, so we're going to be presenting about what we call the learning path. Um, this is a project that we've been working on for a few months now. Uh, it's not quite ready, like in terms of general availability, uh, but we wanted to give people a sneak peek. And so considering how much of a team effort this was, it's actually going to be a team presentation. Uh, so just from like an agenda point of view, uh, I'm going to start with like a 10,000 foot view of what the learning path is and, and why we actually made it. Uh, and then Tio uh, is going to be demoing the learning path itself uh, and demonstrating what the user experience is around it. Uh, and then Coley, who leads our documentation team at Temporal, will talk a bit about the narrative uh, and then the tutorial and guide we built for the learning path. Uh, and then Robin Smitty are going to talk about the application itself and the architecture. Uh, so from like the 10,000 foot view, uh, the learning path is our first step towards solving a problem that we've been aware of for like a long time here at Temporal. Uh, and the core problem is that, you know, Temporal is a very complex technology, as I think everyone knows, uh, and it really requires you to think about things differently and think about the way you build things differently. Uh, and so over the last year, we've made a lot of tremendous improvements to our documentation and the examples and other resources um, that all just, you know, help make the experience of learning and using Temporal better. Uh, and while it's like really important, that stuff is, you know, very, very critical and it, and it helps a ton of people. Uh, there's clearly a separate experience, um, which is not solved for with like this traditional documentation. Uh, and specifically, we're talking about like a guided experience that takes you from first landing on like our homepage um, with the problem to solve uh, to having something that's production ready with Temporal. Uh, and so the learning path is intended to provide that missing experience. Uh, and so we've taken a canonical temporal use case based on our real customer case study um, in, in this one, it's uh, background checks. Uh, and we've turned it into like a robust and comprehensive tutorial along with like a reference application. Uh, and what separates this from any other tutorial is the practicality and the context. So instead of just walking you through the motions of you know, building an application, uh, the learning path provides you the business context and the considerations that motivate the design and the choices which we make at the technical level. Uh, and so our hope is that this will allow users to map their similar but like not identical business problems to our learning path. And that way they can gain value out of the reference application and tutorial, even if their specific problem is a little different, which it almost always will be. Uh, so this like all sounds great, but what does it practically mean? Uh, and so for that, I'm going to hand it over to Tio to demo the, the thing we've been building. So as Rylan said, uh, background checks can be very complex. Uh, a background check can have multiple, multiple checks. and and a number of different rules depending on, for example, what region, what type, you know, type of job you're applying for, things like that. In addition to that, background checks have a lot of different actors or decision makers that can imbue, uh, involve both um, systems or automated system, but also human actors that have to make decisions during the background check process. So as far as the demo goes, we try to document this as also implement, of course, uh that a use case as close as as possible um so we have uh, you know starting a background check we we do have some sort of role as a company hr person that is performing uh starting a background check for a certain client and for that we use uh we have application has a little cli that you can run and i've already ran that on my local system and started uh, a background check process now workflows are perfectly suited for, for uh, implementing a use case like this. And as you see, of course, we have a workflow running. This is our background check workflow. And once we have started it, uh, it is stopped or waiting for a uh, completion or an acceptance uh, of the actual client that is going to, um, that we're performing the check on. Uh, that type of human interaction with uh, modeling in our demo with a mail client. So it's typical that the client would receive an email and this type of uh, client would say, uh, it, the human step itself can have multiple steps uh, through and defined of course, via the workflow. So in our case, uh, our acceptance of a background check by client has uh, three stages. The first one is just an acceptance. Hey, uh, this particular employer has started a background check on your behalf. And now as a client, I have to type in my personal information. I type in my name, a social security number, and let's say I work at Temporal. And now I have a human decision that uh, to either accept or uh, decline, which is of course going to go and signal our workflow to do something according to this particular decision. So let's say in our case, I accept, I get a congratulations uh, message. And if we look back at our, um, workflow, we have started a number of checks for this particular client. Things like federal, 
search, motor vehicle search, state criminal search, those are the types of searches that we can define in our workflow as far as our control flow logic goes. And those can be automated checks. For example, we are interfacing with some sort of services in different counties and different places, they're automated. So we get an automatic response. Uh, one, some of the checks are not automated. So we need human interaction again. In this case for employment verification, we actually have to dispatch a human, in this case, what we call a researcher, to actually go to some sort of place where and, and verify that I am actually employed at, at, at Tempore. So for that, uh, again, uh, we're, uh, our workflow is currently there. And in our email system, we can see another email, which is the employment verification request. That particular human interaction defined, of course, via workflows as well, has three steps. One is, okay, just to say hello, researcher, a candidate uh, has requested that you perform a manual uh, check on uh, employment verification. And now let's say that I'm, you know, I am the researcher, I'm gonna go figure things out based on the user information. And let's say that, yes, I confirm that I'm actually employed where I say I am. And this third one is kind of like a thank you uh, and, 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 and that process is complete. Now, in our case for, for this particular checks, this was the last step of, of the check. So if we, if we refresh our, uh, web UI, we see that our workflow has completed. Now the completion of course has to trigger, uh, some sort of results. And in our case, uh, we also simulate a uh, next actor in our process, which is the hiring manager in this particular case. And this hiring manager, uh, receives an email in our demo says, hello, hiring manager, your breakdown check for this particular candidate has been completed. And uh, I, as a, let's say now I take the role of the hiring manager, I can view my report and it is uh, includes the number of checks and some sort of results. And you can see that this particular, I have a speeding ticket, for example, in this case. The last thing I wanted to demo is our uh, application also, one of the cool things that you guys can actually utilize is comes also with metrics. So Temporal provides also both server and SDK metrics. So out of the box with our demo, when you start it, uh, you get that for free. So you get uh, Grafana is started for you automatically. You don't even have to log in in this case. And you get two um, uh, dashboards for free. One is the SDK dashboard that shows SDK metrics. And the other one is a temporal called temporal, which is a dashboard that shows more of your server side metrics uh, that uh, were measured during the execution of the demo. All right, so that's it. Thank you guys very much. And with that, I'll, I'll take it off. Uh, Coley's next, right? So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Coley's gonna talk to us about how we actually guide users through this entire process and the application that we built. Awesome, thank you. Uh, thanks, Tio. So. Yeah, one of the main goals for us is to extensively document this project. We're documenting the user journey and how to use it, of course, uh, as, as Tiho pointed out. But we are also diving into very deeply the design decisions. So if you look at any of our core concepts or practical implementation guides and the documentation, it often lacks recommendations, when to and when not to do something, for example. Instead, you often see a list of things to consider to try and help inform a, uh, a decision. And that's because often it depends on what the use case is and what you're trying to do, uh, such that documenting the recommendations at the core level becomes uh, challenging, to say the least. Uh, so that was actually one of the factors that pushed us to build this application in the first place, as Rylan mentioned. Uh, so these learning links will send you over to the, the docs. Right, And there's a lot to explore here in terms of application requirements, building the application, deploying the application. Some of it's missing at the moment, work in progress. Um, but what I want to highlight is that all of this is a large chunk of documentation that focuses specifically on the design decisions that came about as a result of the application requirements uh, within the context of a specific use case. So, uh, for example, you know, what businesses, some of these things you can look at, but it's not limited to what business processes we have mapped to temporal primitives. Why have we decided to implement specific patterns over other patterns? And in what scope have we made these decisions and how might those decisions change if things were different? So these are the sort of philosophical points that are really difficult to address at the core documentation level. but 
they're much easier to reason about in the context of this specific use case. Um, as with the application, the documentation here has the ability to grow and answer all sorts of questions. So community feedback is gonna be highly encouraged and welcome. If you have a question about the application that is not answered in the docs, then let us know and we'll, you know, we'll try to address that. The best way you can do that is by creating an issue back either on the background checks repository uh, or the documentation repository. Uh, so thank you very much. And off to Rob. That's me. Yeah, so Rob and Spinny are gonna walk us through the actual architecture of this application and sort of the process we went through to arrive at it. Great. Yeah, thanks, Rob, for, for setting up the share. Yeah, so uh, quickly, just to help you get started, we just wanted to give a quick tour of the project repo. Um, the repo contains folders aligned to all of the background check application services. Uh, so it's actually going to spin up a number of um, essentially microservices that uh, simulate all the elements that have been shown. Uh, act the activities folder, all the functions that and uh, go routines to call external services. Uh, there's CLI and UI. Um, the CLI commands that bootstrap the back end and allow you to provide the human dri driven responses that you saw in the web UI. Uh, the deployment folder contains configuration for uh, Pr Prometheus to scrape metrics from the SDK and the server, uh, the, the Grafana dashboards that uh, Tiho shared, and then uh, the third party API that simulates all of the, the uh, kind of these external service uh, checks that are, that are done. Um, then the, the heart of this, and Rob will cover, is the workflows folder, where you'll find all that core business logic, as, uh, as Kelly mentioned. And then finally, the Docker files. Um, uh, as a, you know, if you uh, kick the tires on Temporal using our Docker Compose, we've extended the Docker Compose approach um, to uh, spin up all the additional services. And then lastly, um, the start and run CLI helper scripts. Um, we are basically, uh, uh, we'll, we'll build the entire environment and allow you to kind of uh, uh, check in on each of the, um, uh, the, the containers. Uh, so Rob, if you want to jump in. Hey, yeah, so I was just going to walk through the uh, main background check workflow quickly. Um, just give you a, good, a bit of feel for what the code feels like. So basically, the, the background check workflow is going to take an email address in a tier, which is standard or full, uh, which is what uh, Tio showed passing in on the command line when we started the check initially. Um, we're going to create some state here, which we're going to record uh, progress with as we go through the workflow. Uh, we're going to wait for acceptance from the candidate so they can either accept or decline. If they decline, uh, then we're going to send an email to let the hiring manager know that the candidate declined, and then we're going to end the workflow there cleanly. Uh, assuming that they carry on and they accept it, we're going to run an SSN trace on the SSN that the candidate gave us, the social security number. And again, if the SSN is not valid, we couldn't get a valid result for it. Then we're going to uh, send an email to let the hiring manager know. And then we're going to exit the workflow because there's nothing more uh, we can do. Uh, otherwise, assuming again, everything's good. The SSN looks good. We're going to get a list of known addresses back from the SSN trace. Uh, we're going to always run a federal criminal search. That's included in every tier that we uh, offer in the background check application. So we're going to start this search. And then if they're on the full tier, so if the hiring manager wants all of the searches run, we're going to run all of these searches as well. And these are all going to be run in parallel because they don't depend on anything else. So they can run alongside each other quite happily to improve the speed of the background check as a whole. Uh, and we're only going to run the employment verification if they actually gave us some employment details. Uh, so then once all those are started, we're going to wait for all the searches to finish uh, so that we've got our data for the report. And then we're going to send an email to the hiring manager uh, with the details of the searches that we've run and what the results were. Uh, yeah, and that's the main workflow. Uh, yeah, and that's that's the end of our, our brief walk through the whole thing. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, so uh, as, as we said at the beginning, you know, this is something that we've been working on for a while. Uh, we're getting very close to having it into a place that, you know, we consider like, uh, let's say GA, but we're still in the stages of, you know, kind of iterating on it and getting people's feedback. So uh, if anyone is interested in just looking over what we've made and, you know, telling us if it hits the mark or if there's things that they would change or, you know, um, want to see that we haven't done, uh, we would really appreciate that. So, um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching and listening. I think that is a wrap. Thank you, team. That was awesome. And uh, <laughs> a little bit uh, went a bit long, but I think uh, all in all, very worth it for the amount of work that has gone into uh, the effort. Uh, if anyone has questions, uh, feel free to ask us in the Slack. Um, I think I'm just going to 
put up the temporal stack just because we're all running long. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much. This is uh, this has been a wonderful meetup. I appreciate Mary and Joe and, and the Learning Paths team for, for joining us. Uh, if you want to join and speak uh, at any of our future events, just email me. Um, otherwise, have a wonderful uh, rest of your week. Thanks, everyone. We'll stick around for final questions, but otherwise, this is it for the meetup. Thank you. <laughs>